Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to be exploring the spike protein again, uh, but actually it's a little bit of a twist. We're going to be exploring how RNA can make it so that your cells will actually produce the spike protein in your own body and get your body to recognize the spike protein by itself, you know, without all the other things that make it infectious. Um, and this is how the vaccines work, specifically Moderna's and Pfizer's. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, overview how RNA is actually working. So there's a few different types of vaccines and I'll just go ahead and get out my whiteboard tool. Uh, so over here we have, uh, let's just make a nice little vaccine container. There we go. And so over here, these ones in the, the green are the ones that we're gonna talk about today. And these are both mRNA, and then this one's going to be a adenovirus, right? Yeah, I believe it, they took a adenovirus from chimpanzee, and they just insert a DNA sequence that codes for the spike protein so that we can build it in our body and generate an immune response. <laughs> cool. So And so in this way, you're actually using a, a real virus, the adenovirus, to, to help deliver the information to your cells and, and train you up with your immune system. Uh, but in these vaccines, these are very new. Uh, so the way the Moderna, Pfizer with BioNTech are doing it is they're actually encoding the entire spike protein. So they take every single amino acid uh, information here, they take that whole sequence and they put it into a strand of RNA. Now for the whole spike, that strand would be a lot longer than this. This one is just a, a simple strand of RNA to show it. Um, but what happens is they encapsulate it within a lipid membrane um, and then that fuses with your cells. And then this RNA gets um, used by your cells to then produce a lot of the spike protein. And so once your body produces a lot of the spike protein, it's able to recognize it so that if it ever encounters the real spike protein on a coronavirus, it knows what to do and how to get rid of it. So in, in 2D, this might look a lot like DNA uh, double-stranded uh, helix, uh, but this is actually RNA here. And we could see that it's actually a single strand of RNA. So if you start right at this loop, go down both sides, it's gonna do some twists, but then it ends over here. And so this is really just one strand that's folded in on itself. Right, and also you can tell it's uh, RNA because we have uracil instead of uh, thiamine. Cool, and uh, you know, just to kind of give it some life, uh, we can play through this animation. That just shows that you know, this is a single strand that, that comes together and, and you know, based on the different interactions, uh, kind of forms that shape. So you know, it could be in this shape, it could be in a different shape. Um, you know, when you look at something that's as big as the sequence needed to encode the entire spike protein, uh, this is going to be a very big jumbled mess of RNA. Um, and, and many of these jumbled messes of RNA are going to be living inside of that, that lipid membrane. Well, let's explore a little bit how this RNA actually gets inside of your cells uh, through this lipid membrane that we see here. Right. So the key features of the mRNA vaccine are the modified nucleotides that we are going to be discussing later on in this video. And uh, the other key feature is what you just said, this lipid nanoparticle that encapsulates the nRNA and to prevent it to get it degraded by enzymes in the cytoplasm via endocytosis. This is uh, the Trojan horse, right? We have all the information that encodes our spike protein uh, really disguised in this lipid membrane nanoparticle gets inside of your cells here. And then once it's inside of your cells, it releases that RNA. That RNA right. then gets picked up by different you know, proteins in your body that all you use the RNA to read it and produce its own proteins. And so this protein that it produces is the spike of the coronavirus. Right, and one point I wanted to make also is that apparently those allergic reactions that are happening, uh, very little one, but they're just happening. They seem to be uh, triggered by the lipid nanoparticles rather than the mRNA, which is just an interesting feature of this this vaccine and by the way you could decorate the exterior of this nanoparticle with some chemicals if you want to target uh, specific cells so the the rna that is inside that lipid nanoparticle that actually goes into your cell is actually modified rna so it's not going to be the um you know, very traditional rna we have uh, a couple modifications we're going to be talking about um and you can see we have a, a few chemicals here as well as this nice little tail over there 
Right. So typically, messenger RNA and other RNAs really, they have uridine and uracil. That's one of the key features, but that's kind of uh, triggering the immune system um, when it's delivered in the body. And so one way to reduce that antigenicity is to incorporate modified nucleotides such as pseudouridine, like we see here, or 1-methyluridine, like this one here. And then we have also this uh, modified cytosine here. And this one is the five prime cap of the messenger RNA. It's called uh, methyl 7 guanidine. There's a three prime terminal as well that's capped with, by a um, polyadenine tail that we see here. It's just a tail with many residues of adenine, we can see. So it's just um, pre preventing the mRNA to being degraded by enzymes in the cytoplasm. So basically, this would be a the content of the lipid nanoparticle that makes up the vaccine. So this uh, prevents the antigenicity that's triggered uh, by the mRNA uh, because it's a foreign uh, RNA, right, and making it into the body. So that triggers some Im immune response. But by substituting the uridine with these other pseudouridines and modified nucleotides, you avoid that uh, immune reaction. And also, it, uh, it enhances the production of mRNA, actually. It just makes it uh, easier for the cell and the ribosomes to produce more and more proteins, which is the end ultimate goal, right? Yeah, and so what happens is that the information that's encoded in the mRNA of this vaccine includes the sequence of the spike protein but with these two mutations it's already there in the sequence ready to synthesize the spike protein uh, already with a stabilizing mutation in there those are a lysine and a valine consecutive that are mutated into two proline residues and this just stabilizes the entire spike protein the, the three trimers and make it just a lot easier for it to be to be stable so that everything uh, works fine for the, you know, the antibodies the, the, and the vaccine development. The, the cool thing about this state-of-the-art technology is that you don't just provide a weakened or inactivated whole virus to the cell, but just a, a portion of it, like you were mentioning before. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the first time we have a RNA vaccine. And we, of course, hope that everything's going to work out well. For the good of mankind all right well um yeah hopefully we get these vaccines uh pretty soon you know personally i would, I would love one and then we could uh you know, sort of go out and, and have fun again we've been you know pretty much working remote the entire time uh since the pandemic started and you know limiting uh, any sort of outdoor activities as much as we can you know, still got to get groceries and all that um but yeah you know once the vaccines come if we get you know over 60 percent of people to actually take these vaccines uh, looks like we're going to be in a really good spot and we're going to be hitting that, you know, vaccinated herd immunity status. One important point I wanted to make, although this vaccine might prevent uh, people from getting sick, uh, it looks like it might not prevent them to actually spread the, the virus, which is uh, interesting and kind of dangerous because you get people might feel more safe because they have already vaccinated, but apparently they could still be spreading it. That's what Dr. Fauci mentioned recently. And you know, that's something to keep in mind for sure. So we'll kind of have a transition of like, um, you know, still wearing masks, even if you got the vaccine until enough people get the vaccine where, you know, it's not like some vaccinated people are spreading it to non-vaccinated people. Um, and then we'll be at this true, um, like herd immunity type of status where we could maybe not right. wear masks again. Um, but yeah, that, you know, no, uh, no timeline on when we're not going to be wearing masks. Uh, masks seem to be a really safe al alternative right now in terms of preventing the spread of the coronavirus. So, um, you know, keep wearing your mask at home and let's wait on these vaccines. And as soon as they're ready and available, seems like it's safe enough to take. So, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for my vaccine. I'm sure Daniel's waiting for his vaccine and it will be really happy when that happens. So <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching this episode where we talk about the uh, Moderna and Pfizer RNA-based uh, vaccines. 
And of course, we have our lovely spike protein here, which has been in many episodes of our coronavirus series. So uh, thanks, and we'll see you next time in our COVID-19 in VR. Bye. Thank you.